Mini LED and QD OLED have been predicted to be the two main display technologies to challenge WRGB OLED next year, but dual layer LCD is conspicuously missing. Why? Let's talk about this. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Dio, and today we're going to talk about dual layer LCD and why it has not emerged as a big challenger to WRGB OLED or white OLED next year. So there's this market intelligence firm called Trendforce. I think I briefly mentioned it in my video about Samsung's 2021 mini LED TVs. But they have come out with a forecast of the top 10 technology trends to look out for in 2021. And in it, there is a section about television technologies. They specifically stated that they expect mini LED technology and also Samsung Display's QD OLED technology to be the main challengers to LG Display's WRGB OLEDs, which is the main supplier of all these OLED panels that you see on the market right now for the year 2021. But as I read through the predictions, I don't see dual layer LCD being mentioned anywhere. So I'm going to try and explain what dual layer LCD is and why maybe, perhaps, Trendforce thinks that it is not ready for prime time. So again, what I'm going to do is to try and use my Samsung Note 10 Plus to draw out the structure of dual layer LCD. Yes, baby, it's Leonardo da Vincent time. So let's first start by drawing out the structure of a conventional LCD panel. So at the bottom, there would be a backlight layer. And then at the top, if we can change the color of my pen, there would be a layer called the display cell layer. Now, there are more intricate layers in between. For example, on a normal LCD panel, there would be, say, two polarizing layers and also a liquid crystal layer sandwich in between that is responsible for twisting and then modulating the light, you know, generating the colors and stuff. But for the purpose of this illustration, we're going to assume that there are two basic layers, backlight and also the display cell. What dual layer LCD does is to add an additional layer called the light modulating cell layer. And it is normally monochrome, so I'm just going to use like black to illustrate it. So this would be called a light modulating cell layer. And that's the reason why those people, those geniuses who invented this technology, is calling this technology light modulating cell layer technology or LMCL, rather than the more commonly used term of say dual cell LCD or dual layer LCD. The correct technical term is LMCL, light modulating cell layer. So let me explain what this light modulating cell layer does. What it is responsible for doing is to control the amount of backlight that can be passed through to the display cell layer. So it is acting like a gate to try and control the light that can pass through to the display cell layer by basically twisting the liquid crystal. And because its function is only to control the luminance, there is no color information that is required there. So normally, it would be using a grayscale or monochrome layer for this purpose because the output doesn't really need to be that high a resolution. So on most of the LMCL displays that I've seen, certainly from the reference broadcast monitor front. For example, the ASO CG3145, the HX310 from Sony, and also the FSI XM311K. They will all be using the same basic 1080p resolution light modulating cell layer, which is monochrome, because you don't require color information and a 1080p resolution is enough due to the saving in cost over a 4K panel to provide at least still 2 million local dimming zones if you consider that the 1080p resolution will have 2 million pixels 
to pass through the light to the display cell layer and then the display cell layer can use their subpixels and further liquid crystal manipulation to generate light from this information and that's the reason why the contrast ratio of these displays can be up to 1 million to 1 because if you let's say use an IPS LCD panel which has normally a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1 if you put one layer as the light modulating cell layer monochrome and the other layer as the display cell layer 1000 to 1 times 1000 to 1 gives you 1 million to 1 of contrast ratio and certainly from what I've seen on the broadcast monitor front for example, the Sony HX310 that I've reviewed, the image is quite impressive approaching OLED in terms of the blacks. I think I call it, I can't believe it's not OLED when I reviewed the Sony HX310. But there is a very big downside to using dual layer LCD technology or LMCL technology, and that is power consumption. Imagine that you know you have a backlight here and you have to have the light actually penetrate two layers, light modeling cell layer and also display cell layer to generate enough light. And we are talking about, let's say, trying to hit HDR levels of maybe 1000 nits. So certainly those reference broadcast monitors that I've seen, they are capable of 1000 nits, not only 1000 nits on a 10% window, but also 1000 nits full screen. But because the light has to pass through two cell layers, and who knows how many polarizer layers this consists of, then the light output is actually cut very drastically and the backlight needs to be even more powerful to try and penetrate these two layers of light modulating cell and also display cell. No one said you know double penetration was easy. So from that point of view, the backlight needs to be extremely powerful and hence the power consumption that is required to generate enough light output not only for SDR but also increasingly these days for HDR purposes especially from an LCD TV is extremely high. So for example the Sony HX310 that I've reviewed last year when I displayed a 100 nit SDR image full screen it drew 200 watts of power and when I displayed 1000 nits it drew 335 watts of power and that is only on the 31 inch screen. Can you imagine if you actually stretch it to let's say a 55 inch panel or even a larger panel with let's say 8K resolution how much the power consumption will be and that is the main reason I think you know many manufacturers are shunning dual layer LCD or LMCL technology because of the increase in power draw you're basically trying to ask the backlight to do twice the work to achieve the same light output and this comes at a time when the US and also the European Commission are implementing stricter and stricter power regulations to try and lower the power consumption not only in use but also in standby of these televisions so at this moment in time, I only know of one major TV manufacturer who's really big into dual layer LCD technology or light modulating cell layer technology, and that is Hisense. So Hisense has released a dual cell XD LCD TV in China where maybe the power regulation laws are not as strict. And they have also released it in Australia recently, so I'm still quite interested in reviewing a Hisense SX dual layer LCD TV. So if there are any Australians who have contact with Australian retailers or any outlets where I can actually buy a Hisense dual layer LCD import it to the UK for me to review, you know, please let me know the contact details, you know, and I'll try and go through the process to procure one because I genuinely don't think that this technology will be able to pass the energy regulations in, let's say, the UK where I'm based to be released to the mass market. And I think that is the number one roadblock for dual layer LCD technology. And that's probably the reason why it is not even mentioned, it is not even on the radar of Trendforce. And remember that Trendforce is a market research firm with contacts deep in the industry. It is based in Taiwan and has 
offices in Sunjin and Beijing. And if, let's say, they have ears close to the ground, which they must be to provide accurate market research data, and they depend on accurate data before they can sell this data to willing subscribers and willing buyers of this data. So they must have their ear close to the ground. And if they are saying that dual layer LCD is not even a blip on the radar, they didn't even mention dual layer LCD as the third technology that would be able to challenge WRGB OLED next year, then I think you know there must be some sort of major roadblock major obstacle in the way you know they are not mentioning anything from BOE a major dual layer LCD supplier they're not mentioning anything from Hisense both of which are based in China then I think you know there must be something really quite severe that will be blocking the dual layer LCD from becoming mainstream and you know I've spoken with some high up people at other let's say, manufacturers who are considering using many different technologies as well. So I think Mini LED has been accepted to be the main one, the most realized one, the most immediate one that can improve the picture quality of LCD panel, whereas you know most of them have expressed some hesitation about dual layer LCD or like modulating cell layer LCD because of the power consumption. You are basically asking the backlight to do twice the work just to create the same light output. And especially in an age where HDR is important, peak brightness is important, and power regulations are becoming stricter and stricter, it is basically just incompatible with the basic concept of a dual layer LCD, which is why Trendforce has come out with a prediction that the main technologies that will challenge WRGB OLED in the high-end premium market will be first, Mini LED, and second, QD OLED. So I hope you have found our explanation video about dual layer LCD and the challenges that lie ahead of it quite illuminating, so to speak. And if you would like to learn more about next-gen technologies such as Mini LED and QD OLED, Please click here for our playlist and I'll see you in the next video.